Second part and final of session 97. Let's finish this session talking about the significator of the mind. Card five, archetypical mind. Let's begin. In the previous episode, we covered mostly uh, personal material from book five and Ra ended the session for us at least with a beautiful answer in terms of the study of the archetypical mind and what are they bringing actually as the message of the law of one. It was a beautiful answer. So I highly recommend that you go back there and listen to it if you didn't at least the last question, which I said was my favorite, my favorite answer of the whole session. Uh, and there's a reason for it, because it highlights the importance of what we're actually doing in this reality. When, what is it that we are? Why are we on this path? You see, what is the practical means of this and how we can get lost in details and nuances, which again, it's nice for the people who like you know, to de, uh, decrypt certain things and uh, untangle certain mix-ups and, and all this sort of, you know, uh, investigation. But at some point, we need to go back to, you know, to center, to reality. So I have nothing to refresh you on last episode. We're going to finish this session today, like I said. And we're going to cover mostly significator here. And I think this is where we talk most about the significator. We'll see. But let's start with the first question that I have, which is when I left. And that's question 10. Don says in question 10, thank you. Car number five, the significator of the mind indicates firstly, as I see it, simply a male within a rectangularly structured form. This suggests to me that the significator of the mind in third density is well bounded within the illusion and is also suggested by the fact that the base of the male is a rectangular is a rectangular form showing no ability for movement. Would Ra comment on that? And Ra says, Oh student, you have grasped the barest essence of the nature of the significator's complete envelopment within the rectangle. Consider for the self, O oh student, whether your thoughts can walk. The abilities of the most finely honed mentality shall not be known without the use of the physical vehicle, which you call the body. Through the mouth, the mind, the mind may speak. Through the limbs, the mind may affect action. So, again, we're looking at the nature of reality through the archetypical minds and the significator houses all of our previous biases. It contains, I like to call it the theater, the theater in which the cosmic drama unfolds because reality is you and you are creating reality from that point in which uh, everything that is in your mind is actually um, given it form. So you are responsible for uh, decoding reality, right? So it depends on what biases you have in your mind, which is going to describe what's out there. And so um, that's what, to me, the, rectang the rectangular shape and everything that the car represents uh, shows, which is just uh, how our mind possesses, you know, this capacity for, um, given form to everything. And I'm not saying from just a, although it is from an unconscious state, but still, I mean, from uh, from all the, the programming that we've had, and this is why the significator is seen to me and to others as the acting persona of the whole mind, because the significator is the one that collects all these experiences, uh, processes all catalyst, and shapes itself and of course by shaping itself it shapes reality so i like that ross says that 
consider if your thoughts can walk. Of course not. You need a body for that. And you need a mouth to speak and a body to act. This reminds me of the Eightfold Path in Buddhism when uh, we look at uh, right vision and then right vision shapes your thoughts. In fact, I would say that vision shapes your thoughts. Thoughts shape your speech and speech is uh, just a step away from action. That's very important because we're seeing the whole uh, structure of the mind unfolding and creating and doing and so um, right vision would actually lead to right thoughts right thoughts to right speech and right speech to right action and then everything else unfolds from there to uh, the rest of the Eightfold Path which is uh, right livelihood and then it goes into meditation and the whole, I'm not going to say the whole nine, I'm going to say the whole eight. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's a, that's how it works. And, you know, the body is needed, of course. The body is uh, the way in which we interact with reality. And so that's also present in this card. Uh, there are many elements in this card that we're going to dis uh, discuss. Some really important ones about polarity, I think. So... Uh, we're going to get to that. But alright, so far that's it. I think that's my um, very slim introduction to the significator. Uh, it's that part. We have so far, let's recap a little bit. We have so far explored the matrix of the mind, which is simply that. You know, it's where everything is registered. Everything that we see in reality it has a sort of matrix, a screen in which everything is projected. Yes, but that itself doesn't have um, any resources. It simply is where it is projected. And of course, through that is that we seek. And so that's why it's represented by a male figure uh, seeking. It's uh, reaching out. And then we get the potentiator of the mind. The potentiator is that which holds the, you know, the resources. And so these two are interacting in a way that it'll produce catalysts and catalyst leads to experience and experience will possibly polarize the individual. It depends on how we process catalysts and how we experience experience. So all of that is for the significator. The significator is the one that um, holds on to all of this and evolves through this process and of course the main thing we're uh, discussing here is polarity or polarization because we know that uh, from the study we have uh, the positive and the negative path the left the right and the left hand uh, path so that's it I don't think I have anything else to add here um, let's continue reading what what we have in store Question 11, Don says, the entity looks to the left, indicating that the mind has the tendency to notice more easily the negative catalyst or negative essence of its environment. Would Ra comment on that observation? And Ra says, this is substantially correct. Um, I have a point to make here, which is that, um, yeah, you ever notice how we do have that tendency of always looking at the bad things or um, the negative things or the scary things and so on. It's a mental tendency that we have. So I have my own reflection on this, which is that awareness is fascinated by the illusion, you see? And so it gets lost in that which is not and all those things and it's really attracted to it. It is its own creation. But think about it and try to rationalize this with me. If awareness is infinite, then experiencing infinity means no experience. So it needs to experience limited things. And infinity is not limited. Therefore, awareness is not finite. And that which it perceives which is finite, then is not true. 
is not true of itself. It's a shadow of itself. It's a, um, a falsehood, an inexistence. And so awareness can only fixate itself into those things which is not. Um, but lost in itself, of course, it yearns to go back. And that's the whole process of the original thought. You know, to once you become an entity, you want to return to source. And so there is a yearn for that, and that's what that's what calls for evolution. But evolution can only happen if you're looking at those things that you are not. You see, you can only become whole by uh, rejecting or discerning those things that you are not. In other words, breaking the limitations. Um, realizing the non uh, division between everything and so on bringing separation to an end so to me it's interesting that the mind of course the mind is the lens through which we explore reality the mind has a, ter a certain tendency to look at negative things how do we experience this well you know how the news are always focused on the negative things and the bad things that happen and people get a sort of rush of catecholamines here of adrenaline and uh, other hormones that get them excited because the mind is well primed to do that to look at those things that are uh, negative that are bad that could be dangerous and so on this is a primal instinct uh, of course for the human being too so we have that tendency and in the experience card in card number four we see the same thing you know we are experiencing we have a tendency more to look at of course the negative because the negative is what will produce hopefully uh, the possibility for polarization that which is not and that's true for both cases positive and negative um, how do you process uh, that catalyst, which is not negative in and on itself? You see, here's the thing. Um, when we look at, it's very important to make a point because we tend to associate things wrongly. So please pay attention to this part. That which is not is a part of reality. In other words, darkness needs to exist for light to manifest okay so if that which is not needs to be for the creation to be then that's not inherently negative it simply is an element of reality we have black and white we have up and down this duality has uh, been created and through duality we can experience reality now duality in and of itself of course is not negative it's just the structure of reality but the thing is that once we begin to polarize ourselves, we need to use this unreality, right, the illusion. We must use it to polarize ourselves. Here's where me as the acting persona, the significator is going to decide. And I'm going to decide that I will move negatively by becoming that which I am not. You see, a separate being simple as that whereas the positive one would realize that no i cannot be a separate being because well first logically that makes no sense <laughs> infinity cannot be many um, and so you recognize the truth of reality and that leads to actions and behaviors that are of the positive range so all of this in the end makes us decide how do we want to polarize we want to polarize towards the negative or towards the positive and yeah so it's a it's a small point but we can expand on this for for a while so again um not to be too confused with this whole study it's very simple uh, we're looking at those things that invites us to polarize in one way or the other and we're just looking and dissecting all of this so again, um, 
the entity looks to the left indicating that the mind has a tendency to notice more easily the negative counter list um, correction here because I said that that which is not is not negative and there's a correction here there is no negative catalyst that's just the way Don decided to word it but he also said or negative essence of its environment that's different you see because catalyst is just neutral it is you who decide how to interpret catalyst and make it positive or negative uh, so very important distinction there however he does say negative essence of its environment and to me that represents the negative essence is that again that which is not uh, the darkness the falsehood separation in practice so let's move to the next question question 12 don says there are two small entities at the bottom of the seat one black and one white i would first ask raw is this drawing correct in the coloring is the black one in the proper position with respect to raw's original drawings and so I think, I think Don is wondering why the black one is on, on the right hand of the figure, the male figure, and the white one on the left. And Ross says, that which you perceive as black was first red. Other than this difference, the beings in the concept complex are placed correctly. Um, so Don is actually going to say the red coloration is a mystery to me. Um, and I, I have heard this association by Scott Mandelker, so credit to him to pointing it out, that this is where we get the association of red with evil, red with you know, bad things, um, because red was originally the color that they used for the negative path. And of course, it can get substituted by black because these two are uh, usually elusive to the negative uh, behaviors, you know, uh, with evil and so on. So, yeah, that's um, that's a thing, and I like it. It makes sense. So, uh, it was first read, and Don again is maybe curious about. Yeah, that, you know, why, um, why are they like this? And yeah, he's saying, is the black one the proper position? So we can read that Don's mind here is, okay, I know that a lot of things were out of place in the other cards. So uh, let me make sure that I'm looking at this right. Are you sure that the left hand has a white uh, color and the other one has a red? We're going to find out why it is this way. So fret not, we have an answer for this. So next question. Question 13, and Don says, the red coloration is a mystery to me then. We had originally decided that these represented polarization of the mind, either positive or negative, as its significant self would be either significant as one or the other polarity. Would Ra comment on that? And Ra says, the indications of polarity are as presumed by the questionnaire. The symbolism of old for the left-hand path was the russet coloration. So, again, <laughs> Ra is not answering Don's, um, I guess, um, confusion, right? He says, it's a mystery to me. We had decided that the polarization of the mind, either positive or negative, uh, would be uh, significant as one or the other polarity. So that, that's his confusion. And Ra simply says, yeah, you know, um, in, in the old days, it used to be russet coloration, which is a type of brownish red or reddish brown however you decide to watch it, uh, to see it. Um, so yeah, the um, to me it's interesting. I don't know much about colors, but I think if you um, kind of mix red, yellow, and orange, you get a brownish look, right? 
and that may be why it is it's that color it's kind of a reddish i think you get a sort of uh, reddish coloration uh, if you do that but towards brown so maybe that's why it is associated because of the energy system and the energy centers remember we we as mind body spirit complexes what we do is that we block the heart and so there is no energy going to the heart and we intensify the lower energy centers which are red orange and yellow so maybe to me i don't know why i got that vision one day and i said hmm i think that's it i think that's the the color that you that you see and I think Ra also mentioned that the negative beings, their aura is kind of muddied. And to me, mud is brown, so I don't know. I have that idea. In any case, um, let's move to a little incident that happened through uh, the session. And then we'll discuss this about polarity and why is the white one on the left hand side and why is the black or red? on the right hand side question 14 Don begins and says would but he's interrupted and Ra says we shall pause at this time if the questionnaire will be patient there are fairly serious difficulties with the instruments throat we shall attempt to ameliorate the situation and suggest the rewalking of the circle of one cough cough and uh, there is a note that says the circle of one was rewalked and breath expelled two feet above the instrument's head. Then Ra says, I am Ra, please continue. So Don wants to know, of course, and says, what was the nature of the problem? What caused it? Ra says, the fifth density entity which greets this instrument affected a previous difficulty distorting the throat and chest area of the instrument. Some fraction of this distortion remained unmentioned by the instrument. It is helpful if the instrument speaks as clearly as possible to the support group of any difficulties that more care may be taken. However, we find very little distortion left in the chest area of the instrument. However, immediately preceding the working, the instrument was offered an extreme activation of what you may call the allergies and the mucus from the flow which this distortion causes began to cause difficulty to the throat. At this juncture, the previous potential of the tightening of the throat was somewhat activated by reflex of the yellow ray, chemical body over which we have only gross control. We would appreciate your reminding us to cause this instrument to cough before or after each query for the remainder of this working. Once conscious, this instrument should have no serious difficulty. This sounds very elaborate and like a serious issue, but as Ra is indicating at the end, she was going to have no issue upon waking up or becoming aware again. So I want to add something to this. Uh, first of all, there was some uh, what should we call it? An intervention of the negative uh, entity that was um, pestering them. And this was simply a difficulty that she had in her chest area. So notice how negative entities, I've mentioned this in the past and I'll uh, state it again here. Negative entities can only affect those distortions that are already present in ourselves. So it could be um, a physical thing in our body. It could be uh, mental, but they can only work with those distortions. That tells us that, of course, we are responsible for that. We are the ones that, whether consciously or unconsciously, feed it. You see? But I want to move even further than that because this usually creates or could create, has a potential for creating a uh, sort of fear, you know, for, oh my God, I need to take care of myself so much. 
you know, and it creates this spiritual hygiene of I need to take care of myself and can become a little bit too much, you know, a little paranoid. Um, so what's my point here? We have things, okay? We are, we're not in manifestation perfect beings. There are no perfect beings. All beings are uh, flawed because they are limited. All beings are limited. There is no unlimited being other than when we use the vocabulary of being to uh, God, creator, awareness, um, that is perfect. And we can see it in ourselves. We can see that that's what we truly are. But when we look at ourselves as created beings or manifested awareness, there are imperfections. So am I saying don't take care of yourself? Don't look, of course not, that's silly. I'm saying that despite anything that we have, we should just continue on, on the path of um, increasing more our sense of uh, satisfaction with what is. And I actually have an anecdote right now, not an anecdote, but uh, a, I guess a little story. At the time of recording this uh, video, some of you may know Sadhguru, who is a very well-known Indian sage, and he has been very active for a long time. Uh, he's in his 60s, and he's a joyful person. I love the way he, you know, he sees reality, and I agree with many of his views. And so, Sadhguru is a well-known person, mystic who. Uh, you know, it's helping out the world and everything. Well, recently he had to be um, taken to the emergency room because he was having uh, a hemorrhage in his brain. It was bleeding. So you see, um, all, even though, you know, everything surrounding, it's a, you gotta go check the news, I guess, um, if you haven't heard, but everything surrounding his condition is, you know, um, it's a testament of what a mystic lives, which is to say that he was battling with a headache for weeks, but he would not cancel his commitments and he would go to all these places and meetings and uh, talking and giving, you know, going to events and so on. He didn't care, you know, it was towards the end. Well, he, he was like about to die almost where he said, uh, all right, I guess I gotta go to the hospital. And he did, you know, and they found him in critical condition, but there was not much to do apparently. And they just had to patch him up again, fix whatever it was, and he continued on. Um, he reported, or he, he was reported to have like a lot of pain, but then, but yet not complain. You see, like this is, I'm not saying we all need to be like this. We all have shades of that. We all battle with, you know, body pain and, uh, physical illness and mental illness. We all battle with all of that. It's just our decision to be joyful in the presence of that. Does that mean we cannot do anything about it? Of course we can. Whatever we can do, we do. But to me, it's a, it's a point not to uh, get too worried. You know, like Ra used to say, when Don was thinking about, you know, what can we do? What can we do? You know, and he was worrying too much about what else can we do to make the instrument more comfortable. I want to keep going with the contact. That actually generated too much worry in him, which was exacerbated. You see, it was a distortion in him and was exacerbated towards the end of his life and putting an end to the contact. So I'm not the one to say that um, it was that worry that brought him there, but who knows, it could have been. And I think it's not a far-fetched um, idea that it was his worry, constant worry that, you know, moved over to, to Carla. He started to worry about Carla too much and Carla reports this. So yeah, if anything, it's just um, a reminder, you know, to not get too, too worried about things and things will happen. And like Ross said here, it sounds very complicated because the mucus and the throat and all of this, it can sound a little too scary, but uh, 
for what it seems is just, you know, I needed to clear the throat. <laughs> you know, uh, you need a pause for a second. Hold on, you know, I need to cough. Something's going on. And that's it. Uh, nothing serious. But all right, let's move on. Question 16, Don says, I was wondering why the dark entity was on the right side. <laughs> of course, he has to go back to this. Uh, and this is probably the best uh, answer that we get. So listen up. I was wondering why the dark entity was on the right side of the card as far as the male figure, which is the significator is concerned. And the light white entity is on the left. If you could comment on that after making the instrument cough, please. And so Rob makes her cough and then says the nature of, and they pause and they say, we pause, 10 second pause. I am Ra, there was a serious pain flare. We may now continue. And they say, the nature of polarity is interesting in that those experiences offered to the significator as positive frequently become recorded as productive of biases which may be seen to be negative, whereas the fruit of those experiences apparently negative is frequently found to be helpful in the development of the service to others bias, as this is perhaps the guiding characteristic of that which the mind processes and records or processes and records, these symbols of polarity have thusly been placed. So let's make a pause here and see what Ra means. The nature of polarity is interesting, they say, because those experiences that are offered to the significator, and again, remember, the significator is the um, the actor and the acted upon, okay? It's the theater in which everything is happening. Um, everything, every experience that is presented to the significator, um, if it's positive, can be used um, and it has a tendency to be used for negative purposes. Isn't that weird? It isn't actually. Because if you are praised by something or someone, something that you do, uh, or you're giving, you know, a sort of um, a good feeling about yourself, that is promoting the negative in you. That doesn't mean, of course, that, you know, if you get praised, oh my God, I'm being polarized negatively. <laughs> um, but we have a tendency to do that, to feed the ego, you see, with pride. So, that's why they say experiences offered to the significator as positive positive frequently become recorded as productive of biases which may be seen to be negative um yes so if you build up this pride and an identity based on you know the the positive things that come to you maybe you you know you earn something and you say you see i deserve that you know i've uh, I, I have been battling so long, you know, to get this and I'm, I finally have it. So you start to build this uh, ego structure. So positive things, they can and have a tendency to be used for the negative feeding. Whereas the fruit of those experiences, experiences apparently negative is frequently found to be helpful in the development of the positive path, basically. Why is this? Well, we all know traumas, um, incidents, uh, bad experiences, and things that are shocking to us usually have a tendency to produce a betterment of ourselves, you know, to find ourselves, you know, to awaken and so on. That's why the spiritual path is so adorned, you know, with all these uh, little, um, little things that uh, our dark night of the soul, or as a friend of mine <laughs> pointed out to me, he calls it the dark night of the ego, because it's the ego who is feeling like this. I love that. Uh, so yeah, that's how we tend to record things. 
Does it have to be that way? No. But that's the tendency. And so they say, as this is perhaps, they say perhaps, the guiding characteristic of that which the mind processes and records, these, um, these symbols of polarity have thusly been placed. So that's why we have on the left side the positive and uh, on the right side the negative. What else do they say? They finish up and say, you may note that the hands of the central image indicate the appropriate bias for right and left hand working. That is, the right hand gestures in service to others, offering its light outward. The left hand attempts to absorb the power of the spirit and point it for its use alone. So, if we look at the image, which I haven't been putting up here, I don't know if many people watch this, so uh, you can look it up in lawof1.info and I think even on NLL Research if you want to give it a good stare. Um, so the hand, the right hand is uh, it's pointing, even if it is towards the left, uh, it is still uh, in that gesture of service to others, is offering something. Whereas the left one, it's attempting, has a sword, and it's attempting maybe to subdue reality, to judge reality for what it is, um, and you know try to make it its own view, its own thing. And so these two are, these two hands are um, descriptive of what's happening. So that's another indicator of the whole image. Okay, let's move to the next question. Question 17. Don says, the eight cartouches at the bottom would possibly signify the energy centers and the evolution through those centers. Possibility for either the positive or negative polarization because of the white and black coloration of the figures. Would Rock comment on that after making the instrument cough? Uh, I have a note here on cartouche because there is... Where are these? Um, where are the comments? I should have notes. Why is there no notes? Oh, it doesn't say anything here, does it? Maybe... Maybe right here is where we have the comments. No, it's not here. I forgot where I placed that. Well, the eight cartouches are actually part of... Um, it's part of the card at the bottom. So I know if you look at the card, it's down there. It's, uh, it's eight symbols. So... What does Ra say? Ra says, I am Ra. The observations of the student are perceptive. It is informative to continue the study of octaves in association with this concept complex. Many are the octaves of a mind-body-spirit complex's beingness. There is not one that does not profit from being pondered in connection with the considerations of the nature of the development of polarity exemplified by the concept complex of your card number Five. So, it's a great consideration. Um, it's the, um, it's a good observation. I never would have thought actually, but that's um, um, right. Signify the energy centers and the evolution through those centers. Uh, positive, or negative, white and black coloration of the figures. So, we. That's the reason why I have this in the back. I know I'm not putting the card here, but I'm pointing at my at my chakras at the back. <laughs> um, like I'm not big on imagery and stuff, but since I had my calling into awakening, I I was fascinated by the energy centers, by the chakras. Something told me that there was a, a science there. And if you remember, my whole background was science, so. I had an affinity for science and I recognized that that was a great way to see and study reality. 
Um, so that's why I value it so much. It's a, it's a beautiful way to describe how things work in the mind. And so it's a great system. I, it really is. Just like the Four Noble Truth and the, of course, the last one being the Eightfold Path, which further describes processes. I love these things because they are easy to follow and easy to understand. So that's what Don associates with this. And it's interesting, I put on the slide, I forgot to remove the I am raw, which I never put, but I left it here. So maybe even more of a sign that this is a great answer. All right, so um, what is raw says? It is informative to continue the study of octaves in association with this concept complex. Because, again, the significator is the one that is moving through evolution. Is that part of the mind that is moving through evolution? And evolution happens in this way, in this movement of energy. See, that's why we also have the way to describe the positive um, path as an opening of the heart, the center, uh, the nucleus of the whole energy system. Whereas the negative blocks the heart and we can relate to this. We can say, ah, I know what it is to block the heart towards certain things. I know what it is to open the heart towards certain things. That's such a great way, you know, for you to familiarize yourself with the uh, um, the workings of of reality of yourself so yeah um, that's what we have it's a it's a beautiful study all right they also say many are the octaves of a mind body spirit complexes beingness oh, this is a little tricky because don't we have just seven energy centers and we live in seven densities yes and that's for simplicity however Every energy center, just like third density has a human being, which is seven energy centers. So there is seven in one energy center. Well, the same thing applies to all of your energy centers. It also has uh, a, re, um, a refraction, right? Of all these, um, th these energy centers. A little bit more pale, I see it because it's, um, um, yeah, as a prism of that particular energy center. And all of these have also, you know, you keep going seven, 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 seven uh, at infinitum. So, yeah, that's what Ra means by many are the octaves of a mind, body, spirit, complexes, beingness. There is not one that does not profit from being pondered in connection with the considerations of the nature of the development of polarity exemplified by the concept complex of your car number five. This last part, I don't think is directly related to the energy centers, but of course indirectly, uh, but they're saying there is, uh, everybody benefits from studying car number five, basically. <laughs> um, and to be honest, it's one of my favorite cards. I say that uh, the fool car number 22 or zero is my favorite but my second favorite would be the significators, all three of them, even though I haven't studied all of them, but definitely the significator of the mind. But that's because they all represent that uh, evolving part of us, that uh, mind, body, and spirit, which is in evolution, that which is absorbing everything. So I like it. But all right, let's move to the next question. And I think this might be the last one that we're going to cover. Let's see. Um, question 18, Don says, do the symbols on the face of each of these little cartouches, such as the birds and the other symbols have a meaning in this card that is of value in considering the archetype? Would you answer that after making the instrument cough, please? And Ross says, these symbols are letters and words much as your language would receive such an entablature, they are, to a great extent, enculturated by a people not of your generation. Let us, in the rough, suggest that the information written 
upon these cartouches and understood to be such as the phrase, and you shall be born again to eternal life. That's what it means. So those cartouches are, um, I guess, uh, hieroglyphs or wording that means that. That's the whole enigma. So, and you shall be born again to eternal life. Why is this place here? Well, to my understanding, um, if you look at the significator, of course, that's the one that is progressing towards um, graduation to fourth density. That's it. You shall be born again to eternal life. Remember that the whole archetypical mind, even though it describes the archetypical structure of the mind, it's also a suggestion the nature of evolution on polarization. It's based a lot on polarization. And so the polarized selves is the one that is going to graduate. So that's why it says, and you shall be born again to eternal life. So at the bottom of the card or of the imagery of that uh, whole structure, at the bottom is saying, and you shall be born again to eternal life. No matter what the, um, what the path is, as long as you polarize yourself enough for graduation. Okay, no, we do have one more question. And even though it's not, that's why I don't remember it being a question, but I'm going to cover it anyway, because that'll leave us for, um, for the next session. Question 19, Don says, thank you. I thought that the wings at the top of the card might indicate the protection of the spirit over the process of evolution. Would Ra comment on that after having the instrument cough? Ra says, we shall end this session for we are having considerable difficulty in using the sympathetic nervous system in order to aid the instrument in providing sufficient of your air for its respiration. Therefore, we prematurely suggest ending this session is there any brief query before we leave this instrument? And I don't cover the last question here because it's just maintenance. Uh, she has suggested a couple of things which I don't remember and I won't check. Um, but yeah, they had to end the session abruptly, you may say, but that's because they noticed that her physical body was reacting in a way that they couldn't remember. Ra had very little... Um, control over Carla's body and they realized that it wasn't optimal so they left and the session left with them so not because of vinyl energies I think it's the first time they finished because of vinyl. not not because of vinyl energies but because of uh, an issue with her body and this is something that Carla used to she said that she used to feel really bad about because she felt like she was letting them down that's what her body you know would allow so it is how it is now Don did say something and I want to comment on this the wings at the top of the card might indicate the protection of the spirit over the process of evolution I like that actually I think there is great assistance I remember Ross saying because we say how can spirit possibly help the negative path isn't spirit good and uh, righteous and all these things no not really i mean spirit is unpolarized <laughs> so it can be good or evil or it couldn't be uh, right or wrong it simply is because spirit is let's say um, the manifestation or the influx of the creator of god of the source of awareness itself. So it cannot be polarized. And at some point, Ross said that the law of one does not blink uh, when providing, you know, uh, it's um, um, itself to positive or negatives. I think this was in session seven, if I remember correctly. I kind of remember that. Um, yeah, if you look at session seven, you'll see that they mention something like that in terms of negativity. Like the law of one doesn't care, you know, if somebody's positive or negative. It will provide that which is needed because it is the creator coming back to itself. So 
Why, why would it have some sort of morality? It's only us here in third density. But okay, conclusions. Like I said, I love the significator because it has this, um, this tangible reality to it, which is how we live our lives and how we create the world. The significator is, like I said, the theater in which everything is acting and where it's being acted upon. So when you hear that you are creating your own reality, the significator is right there, is, um, is the generator of all of this and is the reservoir of everything that you have experienced. All biases are stored there because that's how you project reality through the significator of the mind is where you have this um, this judgment of reality, the way you see reality. So for example, when you see a kid, we all know the kids have a personality to them. It doesn't matter how we try to teach them or what we try to teach them. Um, well, they just have their own personality. And that's because they carry all of this in their significator. They know what they want. Now, all we can do is give them catalyst and they will process it. If they agree with it, then great. And if not, then they'll have to process it further. And so that's all we can do. The same is with us. We haven't stopped being children. It's just that we have a grown up body. That's just because that's how the body works. It grows up. But in the end, we're all children with biases. And we look at the world through those biases. Because those are the ones that create, you know, if I look at the world as terrible and bad things are happening always and we're never going to get out of this, that's what it is. That's what you're seeing. That's what's inside of you. And if I look at it positively and I say, well, that's great. You know, uh, things are, you know, fluctuating always. That's just reality. That's the Eastern philosophy, you know, of duality. Looking at, yes, everything is, you know, ups and downs, inside and outside. What can we do? Nothing. Just appreciate it, accept it, enjoy it. You see, that's different. And that is a better approach, I would say, than to look at the world, you know, from the negative side. I think we all agree with that, but we just can't help ourselves. Why can't we help ourselves? Because our significator is already all programmed. Ah, but if you take out the programming and you change it and you become uh, responsible for everything in your life, suddenly everything changes because you, the real you, who is not really making a decision, is discerning truth from falsehood. That self is in control now, so to speak. It's not in control, but is allowed to see the world as it is. And the world is real. That which is not real, then it's not. That's how you reprogram your subconscious. That's how you change your life. That's how you transform your reality. That's how you manifest your, uh, your dreams and your perfect life and your mission and your purpose. I talk about this often because I find it amazing how we can get lost in the idea that we need to do this and do that and uh, to become a good person, I need to follow all these steps and I need to do these practices and it's simpler than that. It is simpler. Um, but yeah, this is the way in which we structure reality with our minds and it has to do with our prior biases. That needs to change. That needs to uh, be refined. And the refinement that we're looking for is the positive path, the positive refinement. So yes, a lot to study in in our own minds. Take responsibility. Know that you are the one creating everything. Nothing is creating you. If anything, things are reinforcing either your own beliefs or are changing them. And that's the work of the adept. I have nothing else to add to this, uh, but since we have a little extra time, I want to tell you a little bit about my mentorship, which is what I do. Um, I'm interested in just one thing. That one thing is to show you who you are. What you get out of this, 
speaking of the significator, it's not up to you. It's just that you need to find out. But once you know who you are, you can make sense of so many things. You may be wondering, why do I not teach some complexity of metaphysics? I mean, I see it all the time. I'm slightly involved in social media and I look at people and people are attracted to showing specific things about reality and metaphysics and spirituality and this and that. And I have knowledge about all of this. I love it. I like to investigate it. I like to talk about it. I can, you know, talk to anybody about all these things, but I'm not interested in teaching any of that. There's only one thing that matters to me. And it is that you know yourself, know who you truly are. That's what my mentorship is about. It's not about anything um, esoteric. It's nothing complicated. You don't need to learn the law of one before you get to know yourself. It's the most simple thing. And anybody who has worked with me has realized this and said, how come I didn't take this step first? Because all my confusion was for nothing. I can now understand that that doesn't mean that I won't, uh, that I will stop searching and uh, investigating and learning. It's just that now I do it from a point in which I'm not confused. That is what's important to me. Three things are derived from here, which you may see as the golden nuggets of spirituality, and yet people don't realize this. You can only recognize the ego from yourself. If you don't know yourself, there's no way you can recognize the ego. The ego will keep masking itself. So ego is not who you are. Then who are you? Know yourself. Meditation. The ultimate meditator is the one that is dead. And I, I mean that in the sense of not physical death, but the one that is not there, there is no meditator. And so who is the meditator? Know yourself and you'll be able to meditate effortlessly, which is the true meditation, the most profound, the most deep, the highest. That's it. It's not, it's not a meditator. It's this being. Again, know yourself. The third is healing. Healing is, well, I call it liberation, mind liberation, because you have all these constrictions and once you allow them to, uh, these constrictions are not you. They are imposters. There are things that you have been cycling around, but how could you, these are the egos working by the way, how could you heal if you don't take this step back? And now you may be asking, well, but I, I, I don't know myself and yet I have healed and I've been able to meditate and had experiences and I can recognize my ego. Well, that's because you have great glimpses already. You know, knowing yourself is not something modern, not modern, new, novel. It's there, but we just don't recognize it. We don't pay attention to it. So this investigation in which I focus through the direct path to me is the way in which you can experientially you don't need to become anything you don't need to practice anything experientially you can always go back to yourself it's a powerful investigation self inquiry is at the heart of this method and my life is dedicated to it so if you're interested you can go in the description check my instagram and send me a dm there if you want to talk about this uh, program that i have it's several months in which we're going to work together and that's my dedication that's my service to you now i have nothing else to say I'm getting close to the full hour thank you so much for listening for being interested for doing your work you have no idea how much you help by simply being in this state of recognition of reality as it is it's a huge help we don't need to be involved in uh, social media or active work all we need to do is actively work on this this significator that we talked about today next will be session 98 i believe there's a lot of personal material there too that's going to become more common as we move towards the end of the whole raw material which we're getting close to and that's all I'm going to say for now. Take good care of yourself, my friends. I love you all. Have a good day or good night, whatever you are. And I'll see you in session 98.
first part.